been pulled back a little bit to be launched even further. Yeah. And I can show you all through scripture. We're going to look at a few scriptures this morning where things felt like a pullback. But it's in the pullback that momentum is gained. It's in the pullback where, ten, where there's tension. Sometimes it doesn't feel good, but, but in the midst of that, God is aiming us and directing us where we need to go. Listen, and listen to me, church. Um, we, if, if there's not a pullback, the arrow just falls flat. There's no momentum. The, you, know, you know what I'm saying? So, so I, that's, that's my sense. And in talking to so many of you, which I so appreciate, um, I so appreciate so many people reached out and said, how can we help? Now, thankfully, um, we have a restoration company on site, insurance taking care. Thank God for insurance, right? Yeah. Yeah. Make sure your insurances are all like, and the daughter said, <laughs> I don't know, I feel like we're walking in the, the Goddard's shoes right now, but, um, but God is, God is so faithful. We thought about letting the water continue to go and having a mass baptism this morning, but <laughs> we decided against I said I was going to pray at night. Okay, let's pray. Father, we just thank you. God, we thank you. We just say yes to you, Holy Spirit. We open up our hearts to you right now. God, we just ask that you manifest your presence in this room in just a really tangible way. That, that every single person would sense your nearness, would sense your hand on their life, your calling, your wooing. Father, that you've been doing, God, it's only, God, we're, we're, we're only drawn to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, we, just, we say yes to whatever you have for us this morning. In Jesus' name, and everybody shout it out. Amen. Amen. Yeah, often the pullback precedes the, um, I, I did bring a, I brought a podium somewhere. There is a podium around here. It was in my car. <laughs> and thank God this, uh, this building is so close to our building. Yeah. And by the way, can we give it up for like the tech team and all the like, the kids team? Tech team was amazing. Kids team, like all the teams, just just jumped into into gear. Yeah, Chris, parking, safety, everybody. Pastor Christy with all the kids stuff and parents. Thank you for sitting with your kiddos this morning if they're over five years old. Yeah, we just want, yeah we want to make everyone really grateful when we get back for childcare. So. <laughs> It's fantastic. Um, I'm just, I'm just, I'm meandering here because there, there's so much. Would you put the video? If you don't know what's going on, if we when we keep referencing something that happened um, Monday, we had a pipe burst, uh, and it was a sprinkler. This was Thursday, so you can see. Um, Yeah. Then there's like a little river flowing through here. And so so this so this went through um, this went through the, the the whole downstairs. Oh, sweet drums. And a lot of our sound equipment and things like that. So um, but Monday we, we blew up hype in the kids wing. And there's there's so you know, isn't it interesting that when you go through something, because this is like, and we're not saying feel sorry for us, we're not saying like, woe is me, actually, we're really excited for what God has for us. Yeah. We're actually full of joy. We actually believe James chapter one. Actually, let's, let's start there. Go to James chapter one. James chapter one. James chapter one. So, well, the mir one of the miracles that <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna go to a handheld. Mm. 
See, we're just adapting. We just adapt. But James chapter 1 is such a powerful scripture because it, it tells us that, uh, let's, let's just read it right here. James chapter 1 says, Dear brothers and sisters, this is, this is verse 2, James 1 verse 2. Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble comes, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that your faith, when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Should I read it again? I think I should. Because what do we do? Like, listen, we, we, have, we have the ability to camp wherever we want to camp. How many like camping? How many don't like camping? Like, we can camp out wherever we want to camp out. My, one of my worst camp out experiences, let me just tell you really quick, is opening day of deer hunting season in Juneau, Alaska, where I grew up. A friend of ours is taking us to the backside of, the, of an island in his boat. He's going to drop us off. We're going to hike the mountain. We're going to camp. We're going to shoot a deer. We're going to rip the heart out, eat it right there. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a very manly experience, uh, full of testosterone. My friend reaches into the cooler where there's old fish, old, old, old fish, rotten, nasty old fish, and he takes some of it and he throws it at me. Now, I realize that the, the frontal lobe isn't fully developed till 25. We're, we're teenagers at this time, so I'm, we're, we're in bear-infested territory, and I'm like, thanks a lot, bro, because you just made me smell like a fish. And so we, we hike this mountain, and we get to the top, we find a place to camp. We're like, this looks like a great spot. So we, we pitch our tent. We eat our beef stroganoff in a, you know, the prepackaged MRE meals. And um, then we, we wake up in the morning to a logging helicopter. Is, is spot logging right where we're at. So we picked a bad spot to camp out. There were no deer there because there was helicopters there all day long. And so, and I smelled like fish, and I was trying not to get killed by a bear the whole time. So, um, so that's my, that's why, I, where I'm like, you know what, I'm good with not camping anymore. I'm good with uh, RVs. I'm good with hotels. Yeah. Who, who would rather stay in a hotel? Um, but guess what? We, we have the opportunity, and I felt in my spirit yesterday, I felt like, Ben, camp out on the goodness of God. Camp out on the goodness of God. Don't camp out in despair. Don't camp out in, in anxiety. Don't camp out in fear. Don't camp out in any of these places. Listen, we have, it is up to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Like if we, if we want to move in our own flesh, and we want to move in our, own, in our own understanding, guess what? We'll get stressed out. We'll get worked up. We'll start getting fearful. But I'm telling you, I, I feel the spirit of the Lord say, church, camp out on the goodness of God. And then the set list this morning was just like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what God is speaking to us, is that he is good. And do we really believe Romans chapter 8? Do we really believe it? That all things work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purposes. That's you and I. Do, do, you, do you realize that all throughout the narrative of Scripture, that when it looked down, Lord, we just pray that you would heal that child in there right now. In Jesus' name. Bring comfort to them right now. In Jesus' name. Comfort. Yes, Lord. Um, do you realize that in Scripture, when, when bad things happen or when the pullback seemed to happen, it's like we read about the life of Joseph, right? That was really bad. Could you imagine if Joseph would have camped out in rejection? Like, let's be real here. His brothers sold him into slavery. They put him in a pit. Like, this is dysfunction, friends, beyond dysfunction. We're like, I had a really dysfunctional childhood. Did you? I mean, I'm sure you, you, you might have, but, like, that's, that's like next-level stuff. 
Your brothers ripped your clothes off. They shredded them. They dipped them in the blood of an animal. They put you in a, in a pit and they sold you to, to uh, traitors that were coming by in a caravan. That's really messed up. Especially coming from, they, Joseph, realize this, Joseph came from a place of, of great love. His father loved him and his younger brother. It was actually, Joseph was like the most loved. That's why he got the coat of many colors. There was actually such a favor from his father. Much, much like I have with my father. Just such a favor. His favorite son. I'm his favorite oldest son. But no, for reals though. Like, so Joseph comes from this loving environment where he is loved. He is favored upon. And, and his brothers turn like ruthlessly turn their back on him. Can you imagine, and some of you might be able to to some degree, can you imagine, can you imagine the level of rejection that would feel like? Like you, you're like, I'm never gonna see my dad again. I'm never gonna see, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in forced slave labor now. Like my life went from, remember the prophetic on his life? Yeah. Remember Joseph had these dreams? Now Joseph wasn't very like emotionally intelligent again, his, his prefrontal cortex was not fully developed yet. <laughs> and he was saying some really emotionally unintelligent things to his brothers. He's like, by the way, y'all are going to uh, bow down and worship me. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to rule over you. And uh, so that's going to be good. And the Bible says they, they, that they hated him. Yeah. They hated him. They despised him. And so here he is with this great prophetic word. And this like, and much like many of us in the room who have... We, we know the Lord has spoken to us. We know that God has told us amazing things. Like, we, we can see it. Sometimes, church, you can see something in your spirit, man, that you can't even articulate with your mouth. You know what I'm talking about? You can close your eyes, and maybe you can see the marriage that you know that God has for you. Or you, can, you, you know what a relationship with your children, a healthy relationship with your children looks like. Or you know a ministry that God is birthing inside of you it's like that you were made for, that God actually put breath in you for, and he destined you for something, and you can feel it on the inside, but you're not quite yet living in it, but you know it's out there. Yeah. And then you start taking steps towards it, and you're like, oh, and then we start building our own timelines and saying, oh, I know how it's going to happen now. Jenny, I can't tell you how many times I've gone ahead of God and figured out how it's all going to happen. And get, it has never happened that way. Yeah. That's right. I'm, I'm living in some things right now that I thought that I would never live in. Well, I did. I thought I would live in them years ago, but we got pulled back. And I had no clue that that pullback was going to be part of the propelling Heather and I forward and our family forward. Because God said, no, I'm going to work. I'm going to take something that looks like garbage. I'm going to take something that, that stinks. I'm going to take something that, that seems like it would kill you or be devastating. And I'm going to actually take that thing. And I'm going to use it for your, your leadership, for your family. I'm going to use it for your emotional intelligence. Like everything across the board, God says, I'm going to use those things because for where you're actually going, because it's actually bigger than what we can sense in our spirit. The Bible says that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered into the heart of man what God has in store for us. Yeah. It's greater, it's higher, it's deeper, it's wider than, than you and I know. So there's this dream in our heart, and we're like, but if we'll, listen, if we'll allow, if we'll camp out in the goodness of God in these moments, and we'll allow God to pull us back, yeah. and aim us, yeah. and send us, pr propel forward with, with more momentum than we could ever have on our own. Yeah. I see people try to get out of this stuff all the time, and it is not good. It's like, it's like, in the chrysalis, it's like the caterpillar trying to get out a little too early. Yeah. Or trying to, you know, if you try to go help it out of the chrysalis, it doesn't fully develop. Yeah, yeah. It's because my hand is on the cord. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to hold it like a wrapper now. <laughs> can think of as a young MC song that's not appropriate, so I'm not going to rap. I'm not going to rap. It's from high school. Just, if you don't, kids are like, 
We just listen to the beats. Yeah, no, you don't. The words get seared in your spirit. The old song comes on, every lyric comes out. Yeah. That's right. Etched in the prefrontal. Oh, where was I? Joseph, yes. No, but the pullback, listen. If we'll camp out, and, and, and there's, there's, a, there's a, when it hits, it's like, you gotta process. You know, seeing that water, I wasn't like, rejoice in the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. <laughs> Forget not his benefits, you know. I'm, I'm, Psalms didn't start coming out of me. Um, <laughs> but, there, but, but very quickly, it's like, how, ben, Benjamin, how are you gonna respond to this? Yeah. How are you gonna respond to this? Wow. How are you gonna respond to this? Yep. And if we truly believe Romans chapter eight, and if we truly believe James chapter one, that, that we're to count it all joy when we fall into various trials or temptations, knowing that the testing of our faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. It's like, actually, if I will camp out in the goodness of God, my leadership will increase, my capacity will increase, my parenting will increase, my, my ability to be the husband that God's called me to will actually increase. If we can keep that in our mind, because what happened there with the water, that's, that's some of you guys had, I mean, the mitzels. Have you guys showered in the last eight days? <laughs> Praise God. Um, but there, I mean, there, we've all had, the Crestview's having tons of issues. Pipes are breaking everywhere. But doesn't it, okay, doesn't it seem like this one is a little bit like uh, like a crazy little attack from the enemy? You know, and, and so what's, what's so interesting is, is um, let, me, let me help you with your theology too. Um, you're like, well, well God, God caused that to happen. It says this, don't be, uh, James chapter one, verse 16 says, don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters, whatever is good, whatever, and perfect comes down from our Father. Uh, God the Father who created all the lights in heaven, he never changes or casts a shifting shadow. Um, I, the way I memorized it as a kid, where there's no, no variation or shadow of turning. No, no variation or shadow of turning. It's that he is the Father of lights. He is every good and perfect gift comes from, from above, from the Father of lights. But we live in a fallen world, friends. If you haven't noticed lately, we live in a fallen world. And the enemy has defeated foe, but, but, but until, until, I mean, Jesus, Jesus went, you know, the three days in the grave, Jesus de defeated Satan, sin, and death. So he's still, he, but he's a dog on a leash still. He's still trying to manipulate, and he's still trying to lie, and there's still hordes of hell. There's, there's demonic forces. You know, we, we, we know that there's a God. We know that there's angels. But there's also demonic forces. And the Bible says this, that there's a threefold plan, threefold plan that's executed daily upon the earth and upon, on, on, on believers and unbelievers. And it is, and the Bible says it's this in John 10, it's to steal, it's to kill, and it's to destroy. The devil hates us. He hates, and I believe this. Can I just, can I just tell you, like, can I be really, really real with you? Take off the whatever religious hat you think I'm, I'm wearing. Um, there's, a, there's a lot, we, we've only just begun. I think the last thing I declared at the membership night was the best is yet to come, and then we had this week. Um, right? here, here, here's, here's what I believe. I believe that a lot of our ministries and a lot of the things that we're doing, like we may be small right now. We're mighty, I'll tell you that right now. We're mighty. But we haven't seen anything yet. Amen. We're we're going to, we're going to impact the Portland Metro, hundred percent, and we're going to see the family of God ex expand in this area, and God's going to use you wherever you go, and and I believe there's going to be ten people for every one person in this room, one hundred percent. That's right. And so, but here here's the deal: we have a lot of tip of the spear ministries. We have we have don't mess with our kids. In the collective church. Do you, do you know, can I tell you, the enemy hates that. He hates it. He hates this, this, 
this idea because you know what? It's it's actually going against woke culture. Yeah. It's going against a, a progressive Christianity that says that there is no orthodox belief. We just hold everything with open hands. And that's just not the case. And so we're, we're actually speaking out against transgender issues. We're actually speaking out uh, 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 on gender. And we believe that there's there's one man, one woman that constitutes marriage. That's actually pretty tip of the spear in 2024. We, we don't believe in, in young people uh, making a decision whose frontal lobes, a lot of frontal lobe talk today, is not fully developed making a decision about their gender and about perfectly good sexual organs being cut off of young people. So we're actually, we're actually, and, and, and God's given Jenny a plan for this. And so we're actually, we actually have a plan. That's why you need to tune in on Thursday night on what we're to do. We're going to pray, we're going to fast, and we're going to stand, and there's some practical things we can do. But there's not a lot of churches right now that are touching these situations because we don't want to offend anybody. And actually, I feel like the heart of God is offended if we don't. So, <laughs> who would we rather offend, God or man, right now? So, and then within our church, is the sexual integrity ministry getting people free from pornography, getting free from marital, uh, from, from adulterous affair? Like we're seeing people set free. And then in our church is a ministry that deals with women who have had abortions and God bringing healing and restorations to their hearts. So like, there's a lot of like tip of the spear ministries. And we're saying things like, because the enemy is so anti-family. He wants to destroy the image of God. Right. By the way, like when you when you take like whether it's a transgender, whether it's the LGBTQ plus agenda, if you take those things and you roll those things out, they're actually self-destroying. Yeah. 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 And actually, there's actually it, what it ends in is extinction. Right. Do you know why? It, do you know why the enemy hates? He hates the family, and he doesn't because the image of God is shown in a, in a healthy family. Right. The image of God, the love of a father, the love of a mother, the the unity in a family is actually sh is is actually highlights and glorifies God. And people around can look at a healthy family and say, "I can see the image of God. I can see the nature of God lived out in this family. The nature of God lived out in this marriage." So the enemy hates it. So he's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. So I look at this and I just say, "Nice swipe, enemy. Nice try." So, so here's here's the here's the thing. If we camp out on man, I can't believe this and this sucks and this is so lame and you know I just it was you know th this is going to create a lot of a lot more work. But I'm looking at going, we're getting new carpet again. <laughs> like we're getting new furniture, we're getting new sound equipment. Devin's getting a new guitar. <laughs> because his guitar was in the spill zone. Yes, it doesn't play as well when it is wet. <laughs> and um, so and we can just go, you know what, God, you're actually doing something in our leadership. Yeah. I, think, I think that it's no coincidence that Pastor Shauna just came on with us. Yeah. It's no coincidence that all of our teams are, are, are working together. Right. And, and, and we're actually, like our team leaders are actually um, dealing with adversity right now. Yeah. Guess what's going to happen to their leadership? Propel. Propel. Leadership's going to propel. And you know, what's, you know what's so cool? Is is there something about... I remember um, it, when we lived in Alaska, we, we fly in small planes. And, um, you know, those can, that's, that can be rough, especially in, in, in that kind of weather. And I remember my litmus test for peace and safety was always looking at the pilot. Hmm. And I remember one time we were getting tossed. I mean, we're talking tossed. Like if you're not in your seatbelt, you're, you're, you know, you're hitting your head and you're in a small plane. It just feels like, how many have been there? Just in a little small, little Cessna or a little, a little Cherokee. And yeah, Chris Nelson, you've been there and back. And um, fellow Alaskan. And um, I'm, I'm, should I stand somewhere else? I'm ringing. Okay. Um, and so I would look at the pilot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I would take my cues from the pilot. I remember we were getting tossed in this little plane. 
And he's it's this guy, a young guy, he's sitting back, he's got one finger on the yoke. And he's just storytelling. I was like, guys, one time, and he's I can I can actually tell that he's not even thinking about it. Because do you know that that actually not one plane has ever gone down due to turbulence? Turbulence doesn't take planes down. It's it's pilot error. Yeah. It's mechanical failure. It's doors blowing off last air on the Did you guys hear Alaska Airlines' new slogan? When one door closes, another opens. <laughs> you know that you know that Pastor Bob and I have been in, in, a, in an airfare war. Cause he like he moved to Delta, and so I'm I'm hardcore Alaska Airlines because it's like that's my people. I grew up with them. They they actually would treat. They would actually take their 737s and treat them like small planes and like, hey, there's people stuck over here. We're gonna go grab them in this village. Like, so like, they saved Jews back in the day. Back when, when Jews were being persecuted, they sent they sent planes over and, and rescued Jews in persecution. Like their heritage is amazing. And then you watch what what's happened to them now. And it's it's I might be Team Delta. <laughs> And just for me personally, this is like my opinion. This isn't scripture. This has nothing to do. This is very, very opinionated. But I just would like competence in the cockpit. Just competence. Just like the best people. You know, it doesn't matter who you're sleeping with. It doesn't like just the best people. Well, okay. Um, so, so, so here's the deal. Here's a parenting tip. Our kids look to us in situations to take their cues. Should I be scared? Should I overreact? You know, that's why sometimes when our kids fall and hurt themselves, if, if we're the kind of parent that is like, oh my gosh, are you okay? Honey boo boo, oh god. You know, and we're like, our, our kids take their cue from that. You know, and then there's, I've seen parenting on the total other end of the spectrum that's like, Get up, you wimp. <laughs> you know, I don't know what that's like either. You know? <laughs> Get up, you weenie. <laughs> Whose parents were more like that? Okay. <laughs> Look at these strong people. This... God has God has softened their hearts. So so can I can I just tell you something really quick? That we live in such a negative society. That, that hope and joy and good news is like really, really rare. Yeah. Last night, last night I, uh, oh crud, I didn't, sorry, I didn't send it to you, Blake. I just was like, I'm, not, I'm like, I'm gonna go to some of the top news sites and I'm just gonna see what pops up. Cause I was trying to prove a point to myself. I'm like, it's just so negative. It's yeah. so negative, it's so fear-based. It, it wants us to react. It wants us to react in fear. It wants us to shut down. I'm just, can I just tell you that that agenda is hand in hand with the demonic. That, that agenda that is trying to, to breed fear is demonic. And so I, I, I go to the, the sites. The first one, I kid you not, I just pull one up. And it says, pandemic coming 90, was it 90 times worse? Yeah. 90 times worse than COVID. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm really scared now. And then I go to the next, so I go to the next site and I, and I click and I was like, it says, uh, millennials, essentially millennials can't make it anymore in the world. Financially. It's like, oh crap. 90 times worse than, you know, and, and, and then the other one was, uh, was and went to the next one, it was like plane catches on fire. <laughs> just gonna see that one? Mm -hmm. Plane caught on fire. And uh, just and then the next one was like um, pull up the net. I'm just pulling these up. And it's like woman kills husband with a poisonous protein drink. <laughs> yeah. So that she could write a book on grief. <laughs> Right. 
<laughs> so that's what's up. That's that's what we're constantly being fed. Here's 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 what I here's what here's my thought. My thought is let's be people that actually believe the Bible. Yes. That actually stand on the Word of God. Hear me. Yes. That actually camp out on the goodness of God yes. and, and look at every situation through the lens of the kingdom of heaven. Yes. You know, and, and are there things where we don't just accept everything and say, well, God's just trying. There's no, there's, that's why we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads us. There's, there are times when we go, no, we actually reject that in Jesus' name. Yeah. Like something comes and we're like, we're not, we're not like, okay, we're going to take that on so God can teach us. No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Oh, there's a sickness so that God can teach me. No, that's not what a good father does. That's, that's, not, that's not good theology. But, but when things do happen out of our control, is that we're saying, no, we're going to camp out in the goodness of God. And, and that's why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it says that we're to, to, we're to take captive every thought that's, that's, that's against the, that comes against the obedience of Christ. We're to take it captive. We're to take, and so that takes some discipline. That actually takes some discipline, and it takes some, some awareness of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit, you guys realize that Romans 8 says that the very same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives and dwells in the inside of us. Like the third, by the way, the third person, uh, the third person of the, of the triune Godhead indwells us as believers. And he's showing us Jesus and he's leading us into all righteousness. Like that's a really big thing. So don't don't treat the Holy Spirit as like the third in power. No, stop. Or as like the Jew, like JV. Yeah, Holy Spirit rides the bench. God's the, uh, the starter. And uh, no, no, the Holy Spirit is God. Is God. And that's why Jesus said, and you catch this, because some of you haven't caught this yet. That's why Jesus said, it's better for you that I go. Amen. It's better for you that I go because I'm sending the helper. Jesus could only be at one place in one time. Now the helper is with us all the time. The paraclete is what the, what, what the word says. And so, and so he's our helper, he's our advocate, and he's with us. And so if we'll, if we'll hunker down, if we'll camp out in our spirit, man. One of the things that you can pray, by the way, I didn't know you could pray this until, until Pastor Jenny prayed it one time. You know, and I was like, oh, yeah, that, that's amazing. She said, spirit man, come, come to the front. Because we're body, soul, and spirit. And there's sometimes we just need to hunker down in our spirit. Because things aren't making sense around us. And I, can I just tell you something? That if we will be people who use every opportunity as a, a, a way to advance the kingdom of God, we will be odd. Yeah. We will be attractive. Our lives, listen to me, our lives will be attractive. Yeah. Light, let me tell you, light is best seen in darkness. We just bought flashlights the other day. We're like, okay, if it goes down, you know, if stuff goes down again, like we're going to be ready this time. And so we went, we got flashlights, all the things, and we got home and we wanted to test our flashlights. And what did we do? To best test our flashlight, we turned all the lights off. Because we couldn't really see. So I'm telling you, 2024, Portland, Oregon, 2024, West Coast, 2024 society in general, if we will camp out in the goodness of God and not in depression, because if we do that, we're just like everybody else. And then what, what is God? What is God but a feeling on Sunday morning? Does that make sense? Amen. So we want to evoke a feeling in people. It's called the Christ in us, the hope of glory. You realize that? I love that verse, Corinthians, it says, it says, Christ in me, the hope of glory. So we have hope constantly. Now, listen, no matter what your situation looks like, I don't care what your situation looks like, we have hope today. Yeah. We have hope yes. in Jesus Christ. Right. It's called the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's called the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. It's called some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will trust in the name of our Lord. Amen? Amen. We will not camp out in fear and frustration and anxiety in lack and in doubt. You know, sometimes, um, often, you know, I've, I've had, the, you have the, a lot of privileges as, as a pastor. You get to marry people. You get to uh, dedicate babies. You, uh, there's just a lot of, like, beautiful things. Um, I, a lot of you share your testimonies with me of what God's doing. In fact, Steve, where's Cowboy? Cowboy Steve just shared just something amazing 
that's happening with their family, some redemption that's happening in their family. And so I get to hear a lot, a lot of those beautiful things. And we don't, you know, as a body, we're trying to find ways where we can more, you know, share testimonies more often because there's, God's like actively working in, this, in the body. It's amazing. And, uh, but also, also, I, I actually have the privilege of sitting with, with people who have just lost loved ones. I've sat with a mom who lost her 12-year-old. I sat with, um, I, I mean, I've sat with so many different, you know, I've done the funeral for a 16-year-old who, who was so depressed that he, he thought his, his only way out was to hang himself. Um, I've watched as a woman, um, and there's kids in here, so I'm not just going to stop. But, but I've had so many of these experiences. And one thing I've noticed, church, can I just say one thing I've noticed? Is that people that don't know Jesus or have an abiding relationship with Jesus, they don't know where to anchor themselves. They don't, work, they don't know where to, and the word hunker down is the only word that I can think of. They don't know where to hunker down. And so what happens is they hunker down in their flesh. And that's when you get things, that's when people start saying things that are like, you're like, they're like, you know, at a funeral, they'll say something like, well, it's okay because that's what God wanted. He wanted to bring him home. And I remember I got up there, it was the first funeral I'd ever done, 16 year old young man, his name was DJ. And I got up there and I said, his, his, his sister read a poem. And this poem was so theologically incorrect, it actually brought confusion into the room. And I got up there, and I'm just, I'm young, and I'm like, I can't believe I did this. We're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, well-known family. And I said, how many of you in this room believe that, that last poem to be true? And like, no, I said, no, God did not want, DJ, that this, this, was, this was steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. And you know, people will say things like, they'll say things like, well, it's okay because you know, grandpa's with us right now and he's helping us, like he's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's like, no, it's not, that's not, we have a great cloud of witnesses that I believe is cheering us on. Yeah. Absolutely. But as far as you know, so anyways, I say that to say we get really weird when we hunker down in our flesh. Yeah. Yeah. We say weird things, we believe weird things, because you know why? Because we're not anchored. If you're not anchored in Jesus, and that's when people are like, they're like, well, let me maybe take some Buddhism, or let me take some Taoism, or let me take some, 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 some let, me just, let me just grab some thoughts, I'm gonna go grab some poetry that feels good to me. Listen, we have to anchor ourselves in Jesus Christ. Our, our spirit man needs to be coming to the, front, the forefront of these conversations, of this dialogue. And we need to be strong in the Lord. How do we do that? By building up our faith, by praying in the spirit, by reading the word of God, the word of God, renewing our mind and washing over us. Listen, I believe church that we've heard this for way too long. That if we're not doing this, I believe the Holy Spirit wants to help you. If you're trying to do it in your own power, he wants to help you. Amen. So we've got to hunker down in our spirit and say, this is what I feel right now. But I'm going to hunker down in my spirit. God, what do you say about the situation? Lord, I just take every thought captive right now. It does not, like Jenny said earlier, if heaven would not endorse the thought, we need to cast it down in Jesus' name. If there's thoughts about you're unworthy, you're not good enough, you don't have what it takes, you're, you're not capable, you're not able, all the things, you're rejected, you know, your, your sin is worth any thought that heaven would not endorse. Like, I would slap these boys I'm pointing at you, not you. I'm slapping these boys. I would slap my boys upside the head if I heard them talk about themselves like that. We would be having words. Because I would not allow that to say to them to say that about themselves. Why in the world would we think that God likes it when we talk about ourselves or our situations in a negative light? He does not. So we're going to endorse what heaven endorses. Amen? I mean, and I believe this. I believe God is using this for his glory. This whole thing, I don't, I don't know how he's doing it. I will tell you there's already relationships opening up. We had churches, I gotta tell you this, this is so cool. We had churches in the area say, you can come use our building. Yeah. We ain't in competition, friends. This is the body of Christ. And so we're, um, amen. So this, this actually, is, this next week, we're probably go, going to be in, in, a, in a church in Lake Oswego that's really beautiful and really excited. 
We haven't finalized anything yet, but that's what we're working towards. And so God, I think God's gonna build relationships. He's gonna build, he's gonna build unity. He's gonna draw. I have this, I have a sense that we're gonna grow during this season. And that we're gonna have to go to two services when we get back. Come on, somebody. I think you should actually get excited about that, even though it might cut into your sleep, it might cut into your your activity. Um, I think that we should uh, be really excited about that yeah. because more services mean yeah. means more people, means yeah. more souls, yeah. means more people like Steve Hill yeah. getting yeah. Their, their just their lives rattled to the core. Right. Now we're talking Steve. Steve loved loved the Lord. He went to church. He was involved. But I tell you, God got a hold of his heart and took him. It's it's been amazing to watch. Yeah. You're a mighty man of God, Steve. I'm gonna read one more verse and then we're gonna close. Um, let's go Psalms 112. I think the whole the whole passage is so good. Um, we don't know where the men's intensive is yet, but there will be a men's intensive. It, it will it will happen. Okay, Psalms. Psalms one twelve says, "Praise the Lord! How joyful are those who fear the Lord, and delight in obeying His commands. Their children will be successful everywhere." An entire generation of godly people will be blessed. They themselves will be wealthy, come on, and their deeds will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the godly. Oh my word, did you see that? Light shines in the darkness for the godly. That's, what, that's how we can go through things. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We're not promised that there's no valley of shadow of death. We just get to go through it. Yeah. And he sets a table before us, amen? And he leads us beside still waters for his name's sake. So the light shines in the darkness for the godly. They are generous, compassionate, and they're righteous. Good comes to those who lend money generously. You all have been, have been so generous lately, thank you. And conduct their business fairly. Such people will not be overcome by evil. Those who are righteous will be long remembered. That's called legacy. Everyone say legacy. legacy. Do you want a legacy? Yes. Come on. They do not, here, here's, here's, listen to this. They do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to care for them. Yes. Keep going. They are confident and fearless and can, and can face their foes triumphantly. They share freely and give generously to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. They will have influence and Honored. Isn't that good? Oh, here we go. The wicked will see this and be infuriated. They will grind their teeth in anger. They will slink away their hopes thwarted. Somebody say amen to that. Yeah. I, I love, I love, love, love that light shines in the darkness for the godly. Can we stand?